I'm recording. Everything is good. I'm recording as well. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your Bedroom Super Producer podcast. We are your hosts. My name is JT. My name is BK. And today we have a very special episode for people out there who are budding entrepreneurs, people who want to monetize their creative efforts, people who want to sell beats. Mm, that's right. I think we are... We could even say we we are in that category of uh, selling selling music in this uh, international internet world of ours. And we've actually been at it for quite a while. So today, I think it's it's only right that we repay our dues to the community of people out there who are grinding their behinds off, trying to come up with the best music, the best marketing plan the best branding, and ultimately trying to, to make a living from their uh, music endeavors. Indeed, indeed. It's time to share the, the secret sauce to <laughs> potentially make a living off of your music. So, BK, on our different social media outlets, we receive a lot of questions mostly related to the book, obviously, and the masterclass, which are directly uh, talking about these points that we are going to, to talk about today, which are how do you sell beats? How do you make the music that sells? Where do you find customers? Yada, yada, yada. But uh, my first question for you to get this party started would be, is selling beats online oversaturated? That's a very, very good question, first of all. Uh, it depends what you mean by saturated. If you mean that there's there's a lot of people selling beats online, perhaps we could say that it's saturated. At the same time, I would argue that even though there are a lot of creators out there selling beats online, there's also a lot more um, like outlets that require music. So. Um, there's more websites, there's more uh, commercials that require stuff, there's more, um, I don't know, training videos that require music, um, so many uh, so many YouTubers that make the, a lot of, and a lot of content, and if, if you say a lot of content, then you mean like a lot of music required, um, be it for games, be it for like apps or whatever. So yes, in a way, it's a bit saturated because there's a lot of people creating music, but at the same time, I think there's a lot more venues and a lot more like different outlets where you can like that can use music and that like basically consume like consume music at a, a very high rate. Yeah, I think it's a great answer just from the fact that the need for music has never been bigger. The demand has never been higher. And like you said, the opportunities are quite numerous now. We would have to, to run a survey. I don't know if our listeners are more trying to cater their beats to artists versus us who are basically catering our music to businesses, which is kind of a different uh, exercise. I mean by that, that when you uh, produce music for corporations to use in their corporate videos, TV ads, uh, and so on and so forth, the music cannot be as edgy as if it were for an artist. Would you agree with that statement? Um, yeah, totally. Um, but like you said, it depends to what type of client you're you're tailoring your music to. If we're talking about like straight beats and you're really looking for um, basically rappers or uh, people who are gonna like use your tracks to to make an album on it or something. It's it's a little bit different than like making a video for like a Volvo ad, or making that next uh, uh, track with the little ukulele for that person that's running on the beach. So it's it's like it's pretty much different approaches. Um, 
I think we've done both. We've sold like beats to specific artists and we've sold also for that little jingle thingy uh, on YouTube. So I think we can talk about both. But you're totally right that you're not going to be making the music in the same way. And on one side, you're going to be asked to be maybe a little bit more creative and maybe like be very much your own producer and be very um, like have a special style. And on the other side, you're going to want to be a little bit more in the masses to see what works best what would clients pick up for their next commercial? Yeah. And, and so to to um, emphasize this first point I wanted to bring to the table, I think that, yes, of course, there's a lot of competition. Whether you want to produce for, you know, internet content and corporations and go more of the stock music route, uh, whereas if you want to sell to artists, it's going to be a different creative exercise, but both can absolutely work. So that's the first thing. So in 2021, you can still absolutely start selling beats online. And the second point would be, what is your goal? What are you most comfortable doing? Are you more of a chameleon? Uh, can, you, can you juggle different styles? you know, do an, an EDM song on Monday and then on Wednesday do a funk track and finish off the the, the week with a, like a, a folk track, for example. So if, if you're more versatile and you like to, you know, manipulate different sounds and, 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 and try your hand at different styles, then stock music is more for you. Whereas if you have, a like you said, a very definite style, you have your own sound, uh, maybe then you'll be more competitive in the artist uh, slash placement arena. So that's the first thing. Uh, and so obviously today we want to encourage people, not discourage, right? So uh, you will uh, face huge hurdles in this game, but uh, the first thing is to get started. Now, my second question to you, BK, and again, it's, it's me trying to... Um, kind of remove certain uh, misconceptions and preconceptions about the game. And so one of the other question that, that I get a lot is um, like, where do you get started? How do you get started selling beats online? I think the easiest way would be to start like basically keys in hand. You make the music, you're in charge of making uh, the music, and you strike a deal with a website that's going to sell it for you. That's, I think, the easiest way I think it is to start. So you're not going to be taking care of the marketing and you're not going to be um, uh, going, like, trying to get your, your track sold or even the relationship with the artist, whatever. Um, for me, that's pretty much the easiest ways once you get better, then we can talk about it a little bit later. But I think like a site, like I don't know if you agree with me, but if we're talking about, I think something like an audio jungle or a pond five for me would be pretty much the easiest way uh, to get started. So you focus on the music and then you present it to a website like that and they take care of the, the selling part for um, a basic fees, they keep a certain percentage and then you keep a certain percentage. I don't know. Uh, yeah, well, again, it, it all comes back to your goal, your main goal. Do you want to work with artists or do you want to work uh, in a bigger volume with, uh, you know, internet content creators? So if you target content creators, obviously Pond5, Audio Jungle are great outlets to uh, get your music heard and sold. For artists, uh, usually these websites do not have the right type of license to cater to artists who actually release music and sell music using your instrumentals. In that case, you would be uh, better off with like an Airbit or a BeatStars account. The only issue that I have with those two platforms 
And it seems from the questions I get uh, from producers who try to sell to artists is that this, the traffic is not quite there yet. It's it's not at the same level as a Pond 5 or as a Audio Jungle. So obviously, when you're trying to go the artist's route, you're going to have to be better at marketing yourself and driving a bit more traffic to your specific artist or producer page on these platforms. Mm, true. Uh, I know. I remember that. Um, like we, we had that, I used to have tracks on SoundClick and uh, sites like that and traffic wasn't, wasn't that, that good. I don't know if they didn't market the site very well, but back then it wasn't, uh, unless it, unless you, like if you wanted to have like attention from people, you had to have a lot of tracks on that. So, so you're, you're yeah, kind of so, right. So that's a great segue to, uh, to, to, to give more specific details about the route uh, for producers who want to sell to artists. And I think that you, you, you've said it right there. Um, there's kind of a payola type thing going on in, on these websites. I don't know if BeatStar is like that anymore, but I know that on SoundClick, for example, you, you had to buy um, basically your, your spot in those top 10 or top 20 uh, charts that SoundClick had, and that was the way to draw eyes to your specific page. And from there, consistency would usually help you sell more over several months, because mm. well, usually those those ads would last anywhere from like a, a day to a week, maybe a month. I I can't remember. I've never yeah. bought any of those, but I know uh, from having purchased online courses from from sound click uh luminaries that uh, it was the way to go you had to buy basically mm. uh visibility or, or advertising yeah and also i think that you had you had different like the, there were paid plans i think on certain of these these websites i don't know if it was like that on sound click but i think on like airbit or um is it Selfie or beat brokers or something i think you have to buy like a, it's pretty much like a paid plan like a, like if you would like kind of like on splice or whatever you pay like 19 99 a month or 40 dollars a month and depending on what type of plan i think you would be ranked differently um i think the the percentage that you that they would keep would be different and so it's that's also part of the uh, the the whole selling your beats online. It depends at what level you are, but you're gonna have to find like that that right balance of what's good for you, what's not good for you. Maybe you want more traffic, and you're willing to pay a little bit for it, like you said, or you're willing to pay to get your your tracks a little bit higher in the ranking. So it's all it takes a little bit of research. It's not a it's true that it's not as straightforward as we would want it to be. Yeah, well, I'm looking at the pricing on uh, Airbit, for example. I think that nowadays it's mostly uh, more functionality towards marketing your own page. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not so much getting uh, paying for, for exposure anymore. Okay. Uh, but with, with that being said, and by the way, Beat Brokers, I think, is more of a, a, a drum kit marketplace okay. um but yeah i mean so so that's the next topic and, and and it's really the big one because as you've said in the stock music game the marketing is basically taken care of for you yeah the competition is uh more fierce you know you, you'll battle with more accomplished composers usually than on let's say b stars for example um but yeah, so if you're you're selling to artists, then the, the the real challenge is becoming a great marketer of yourself and your music. So so this is really we, we were talking about goals and everything. Well, is one of your goals reading 10 to 15 marketing books and mastering, you know, online content creation, video creation, email marketing? Maybe even SEO and, and SEM. So you really have to, to, to ask yourself, am I willing to spend almost as much time on marketing as I do 
on making beats. Because at the end of the day, that's the trade-off between diversifying the genres of music you produce, aka going into the stop music arena, versus maybe mastering only trap beats, getting very, very proficient and creating your own style, but then having to create a brand for yourself. Yeah, exactly. And also, I think it also depends, did you want to become like a, a, a renowned superstar producer that people know? Or you're, 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 you feel good just like producing and making your music in the shadows and like no one even knowing sometimes what, what type, that it was your music that they heard. Because stock music, your name is not written there. You're not going to get the fame. You're not going to get nothing. Uh, but if you're a producer and you work with a specific artist and they blow up, well, your name is out there. The marketing, uh, it works itself etc cetera, etc cetera. so like you said it's very it's very goal dependent and what what you want for yourself in the future yeah not not only goal dependent but at the end of the day you know it's funny that you you mentioned fame because when i uh quit my job and started to to just go full on with the beat selling business I was always asking myself and reminding myself of my choice, which was the money or the glory or money versus uh, fame. And for me, money was always the end goal because I wanted to provide for my family. I wanted to be able to pay my bills, uh, making music. And so I never really cared about, you know, followers and being known and, and, and all of that stuff. So it's kind of a, ultimately it boils, boils down to, what are you trying to accomplish uh, in terms of life goals? You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And so uh, in talking about this point of the money or the glory, why do you think nowadays so many people are getting into beats, tr actually trying to sell beats and not only make beats? You know, when we started, it was, if you were making beats, you were al already like considered a wizard because... It was so foreign and, and, and alien to, to regular people that you could actually download software or buy software, hook, in, hook up your, your computer to a, a keyboard or a sound module and actually put together professional sounding tracks. It was the, the, the end goal was just to understand how to make beats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, that, and nowadays it's so easy, you know, with YouTube, the tutorial game and all of that, that... I guess people now are, are, are way past just learning how to make beats and they're already thinking about selling. And wh what do you think that is? Well, like you said, I think it's the advent of uh, technology and uh, the access to all that information. And um, there's so many good uh, like business savvy people out there who have made it a little bit easier for producers. Say today we get you can get websites with like thousands and thousands of loops uh getting the samples are it's it's not it's not that difficult today you get sites where you can get your drums and your loops and the, the splices of this world so um you can buy instrument presets there's like tons and tons of stuff out there just to to make it easier and like you said the tutorials are pretty pretty out of this world today the the The, the amount of tutorials covering multiple platforms, uh, PC, uh, Macintosh, all the different softwares, the Cubase, the Logic, uh, Ableton, everything. So I think it's, it's like the technology put, uh, it puts making music more in the reach of a lot of people as Before that wasn't the case, so uh, maybe that's why we uh, we're having this uh, this super moment in time where a lot of people are making making music and de facto also wanting uh, to to sell it online as as with the YouTube revolution that everyone wants to be a YouTuber now that you can just have your your basic uh, iPhone and make videos every day as long as you're you're able to provide interesting content. Yeah, I, I guess for me, 
people are, are, are trying to, to, to give purpose to this whole thing. And if you're making money out of all of the hours you spend in front of the computer, then it kind of makes sense. You know what I mean? I, uh, I'm still not quite sure. Sometimes, you know, people will approach me on, on, on our Instagram, Delicate Beats, and, uh, they'll ask, like, they, they'll ask me to give comments on the music and they, I was speaking to this person the other day, uh, who had a, a long list of credentials and the person was literally selling themselves to me saying, I know this and that instrument. I've studied this. I've done that. And I was listening to the music and I was like, well, you're just not quite ready yet. Just focus on the music and the rest will come together much more, uh, you know, faster and, and e easily to you. Whereas if you're trying to, to force sales with a, a product that is just not market ready, then you're, you're jeopardizing your, your uh, career because you'll get discouraged really fast and and by you can't be creative if you're discouraged you know what i mean like it's it's so much about momentum in this game you know building your confidence is all about you know going faster being more efficient and so that to me is that to me is my whole issue with beginners already thinking about monetizing their their musical efforts is you need to to learn how to make great music first like mm -hmm. don't, don't don't waste your energy trying to figure out a branding strategy if your beats are not quite there yet i don't think it's a it's a bad thing to to, to look into the future and and maybe start thinking of it and like uh, studying it and maybe reading a couple of books on it or get uh, and watching the, those tutorial but it shouldn't be absolutely absolutely the end goal and like you said you should be focused more on like putting in those thousands of hours to make the greatest beats and but probably putting in those thousand hours to make like like shitty beats to make those thousands of shitty beats so that at the end of the tunnel you get something decent and you're you're probably right that like, like people today they're they're trying to find shortcuts and they watch a couple of tutorials and now they think they're experts at Ableton and whatever and they start producing and if six months later they're not selling beats then they're they're disappointed or whatever but it's kind of the fast-paced world we're living today everything is supposed to come very fast you decide that you do something you yeah you take a little course you read a little you read a little bit about it you take a tutorial and you think that you're an expert but like you're right like when we started I didn't start to play an instrument to become a rock star. I just started to play the instrument because I wanted to learn songs and just play, right? And you need to be able to do that for a couple of years without necessarily thinking about generating money or it has to be, for me, it has to be fun and you have to like, have to have the want to keep on learning about something and to keep learning songs not necessarily to have that end game of of making money so i i kind of agree with you that sometimes people think more about how they can monetize something than to be really really good at uh, at their craft it reminds me of a book i'm reading right now which is the uh, the happiness advantage in which the uh, the Harvard author, uh, I think it's Steve Aker, or uh, let me get the uh, let me get the book just a second. Yeah, because I know I got the uh, <laughs> his first name wrong. It's Sean Aker, in in which he says that um, we live in a world where we think that performance and achievements will make us happy. And he contends that it's the absolute opposite way around, which is you need to be happy first and then the achievements and the success will come, you know? And, and, and even me, like last week, I was still thinking that way, you know, when I, I'll, I'll, when we'll hit, certain milestones in our sample business or when I'll sell X amount of songs on premiumb.com or, you know, 
I'm always trying to, to motivate myself by achieving something new and, and bigger and better to feel more fulfilled and happy. And that absolutely stifles my creativity. Like it, it kills it before I even started. You know, if I have a, a, an average day in, ter in terms of sales on the stock music uh, market, the next day I feel like trash and I, I start off my day like that, you know? And it's so, it's so perverse. It's so, so it's, I'm literally my own enemy, even though all I'm trying to do is motivate myself, you know, and, and try to g give momentum to my days, my creative days. So again, it goes back to the idea and it's, it's kind of us miyagi ourselves <laughs> out of this question, but it's really all about having fun first. And I understand that it's, it's kind of a fuzzy concept but it's still 100% the way to go, right? You have to get pleasure from making music and doing stuff related to music. It has to be, like you said, it has to be something fun. At the same time, you need to be organized uh, to be more efficient and to, to be able to, 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 to find out, let's say, what, what type of songs you want to make and like what mix, like what people want to hear, etc. But But like you said... Like the, the 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 foundation is the fact that you're happy making that music and you're happy looking for answers and solving problems related to music and educating yourself and writing better songs uh, and on and on and on. So it's, I think that's the. If you want to go even deeper, I think that's the, the the life of the artist. You have to be able to, to 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 tune everything out. And be able to receive that divine, divine uh, inspiration, or uh, listen to have that muse on your shoulder to create that 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 special track that even yourself listening to it two days later, you're like, "How did I come up with that? I have no idea where that came from." Right? But at the same time, you still live in the real world, and you still have to pay your bills. You still have to make a little bit of money. You still have to be organized. You're not going to be you're not going to be inspired every day. You need to to find ways to still be productive, uh, organize your library, and et cetera, et cetera. So I think that's the that's the fight that you have to be willing to to fight every day when you're a creator and when you're an artist. That yes, you want to make money, but at the same time, you can't just think about selling. Like a painter doesn't paint to sell the painting. He paints because he wants to paint so it's it's uh it's a very difficult state to manage that's what i've found in all the years that we've we've been doing this and it's also quite uh opposite in a way you know making music to to, to enjoy life and then making money from the music to enjoy life it's mm. uh they, they, they do not work uh, hand in hand. It's, it's, it's a very difficult marriage to achieve. But I guess what we're trying to tell our audience today, BK, is that you, you still need to respect the craft first. Yeah, exactly. And, it, and, and nothing, you, you cannot start to talk about building a business until you are really certain that you are passionate about music and that you want to, you know, compose music day in and day out, like six, seven days a week and yeah, exactly. eight to 12 hours every day, etc. Yeah. So um, the next point I wanted to discuss with you today was uh, some of the lessons we learned by building DelicateBeats.com, our sample uh, library business, because I think it, the, uh, the online marketing game is pretty much always the same, whether you're selling eBooks, selling, you know, downloadable products, uh, or, or any type of information products. It could be, it could be online courses and master classes, but at the end of the day, marketing something to a specific crowd is kind of always the same type of exercise. So I wanted to, to, to get your opinion on what you learned in the past four years building our business and how that could translate to our audience learning the ropes of online marketing. We've learned a lot, I think, in the past four years. I think it's 
it boils down to, for me, it always boils down to the basics. We always think that it's more complicated than it is and that we have to invent new things and everything. But at this, the end of the day, for me, you have to go back to basics. And the basics, what is the basics? It's what do you like creating, as we were just like speaking earlier. Um, it's always going to be faster and it's going to be a better product if you like what you're creating, right? Um, you have to understand like what's out there you can't just like go to your cottage for a year and just start programming contact instruments you have to be like listening to podcasts to see what's going on with the the, the latest technologies uh watch youtube what what are people doing with the latest native instrument stuff what people what are people doing with the serum stuff um listen to commercials to see what type of sounds like a perfect example would be let's say uh, i think two years ago or three years ago if we had made a bank that uh that was all ukulele loops i think we would have sold like like thousands and thousands of, of of presets right and so i think it's first of all like i said doing something that you like second of all like knowing the like the landscape, what's out there, what are people doing, what what are what do people want, what do producer want? Like what are the different instruments that are required in the like this year, what do people want to play? Like what would someone like if they didn't know how to play bass, but they wanted to have a a, a playable bass instrument uh in, a, in some sort of sampler. So understanding that. Um and at the like last two as as we always, as we've been doing for the past like 10 years, 15 years, um, always get better at your craft, be it mixing, be it plugins and everything, and keep learning a musical knowledge. I think that's the the four things that I always keep reminding myself um, uh, as I keep uh, thinking that I need to invent something new. It's these four things. And if you f focus on that, usually the rest comes into place by itself what about for you yeah i mean it's it's a great answer and uh, unfortunately it's it's not one that you could uh, readily make available as a top 10 secrets of how to <laughs> no exactly market, market yourself as a beat producer because uh, unfortunately that's one of the things we learned with the online marketing stuff is that there's no secret sauce there's no shortcut there's no top 10 secrets it's it's really all about, as you said, uh, knowing what you who, who you're trying to sell to and what they what do they want. So if if I were to try to translate what you just said, but in terms of being a producer targeting, let's say rappers, because it's that's all I see on Instagram and, and YouTube is people doing trap beats trying to sell to rappers, right? So how old and where do most trap rappers live you know how, how old are they where do they live uh and what are their um like favorite websites or blogs or you know and and that way you know where they reside on the internet okay so that's the first thing once you know that uh you you'll have to create content and, and something really interesting you said was know what you like to create because even with content you have to enjoy yourself and if if you're not enjoying yourself making tutorials, don't make tutorials because you're gonna you're gonna go nuts after a few months of trying to to post good and relevant content to your audience on YouTube. You're you're just gonna burn out. So if you if you're better at writing stuff, well, start a blog. If you're better at uh, taking pictures, well, take pictures. You know, it's the only thing that really translates to your audience through the screen is your passion. So if if you seem like you enjoy doing whatever you do to market your business, it'll it'll show and 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 people will gravitate to you, towards you more, okay? Um and then so so you have to understand who your target target audience is. You have to cater the content creation effort to please this audience with whatever they like to, to consume as far as content. And uh, yeah, after that, it's, it's, it should be pretty much organic. There's not 
a whole lot more to it than that. Yes, you could start a mailing list and write some motivational and, and obscure, uh, mysterious emails, trying to entice people to purchase like a big beat bundle or something. But at the end of the day, if you create content around your beat making efforts, daily vlogs or little, little episodes on how you created such and such samples or beats, then that, that's, way, that's well enough for, for what you're trying to achieve, which is just people going on your Instagram and beat stars and purchasing your licenses to your beats, right? It's easy to want to go overboard and to have a blog and to have tutorials and to have tutorials on uh, different instruments and different plugins and different DAWs and et cetera and et cetera. But at the end of the day, like you said earlier, do you want to be a, a marketing machine or do you want to make music? Well, it's the same thing in the promotion arena. Do you want to make music or you just want to be promoting your music and making tutorials? And because editing is, it takes a long time. Editing a podcast takes a long time. Editing a video takes a long time. Um, as long as it, it's the same thing with making music. So I think it's like you said, finding your two or three ways uh, that you like to promote, uh, to, to, to bring attention to your brand. And the rest normally should speak uh, for itself. And like you said, you have to be, you have to love what you're doing because if you don't, you're not going to be able to, to make that content and make those beats uh, uh, on, a, like on a regular basis because like the, the, the whole grind phenomenon, that's not a joke. You, you have to, you have to have consistency in everything, in your branding, in the, the work ethic that you're putting, that you're putting in, so that maybe a year, two years down the road, it starts working. Yeah, absolutely. And you, that's the, the, the key word I wanted to, to focus on is consistency. All of these uh, social media platforms out there um, favor the same thing, the same two things, actually. Uh, first is, you know, having the right content so the some of the some of that would be keywords and, and and the right titles but the really just having the right content and then posting um often enough is really the the the, the whole secret sauce to this whole thing um if you post once a month and you have great content or a stellar content that might be enough for for but for mere mortals like us uh, once a week, even a few times a week is, 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 uh, is better because you, you, it's, it's sad, but you need to stay in front of your, your audience as much as you can to, uh, maximize sales. And, and that's just the, the reality of it. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. And so, Eyeballs. um, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, but then again, um, what we've learned from different tests we've made online, you know, paid advertisement, influencer marketing, email marketing, uh, video content and all of that. Um, it's way better to have a small audience that is very much engaged with your content than a huge audience that is not really all that much engaged with your, with your content. So, I always tell people like it's not about the number of views and the number of followers. It's it's about the watch time, and uh, you know the, the 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 like to view ratio. You know, there's a tiny difference there, but it makes a, whole, a world of difference, uh, especially with algorithms such as Instagram and YouTube, which will push your con content if the algorithm senses that people like it and. How do they know that people like it? Well, they they discuss, they talk about it, right? Um, so so let's move on from the marketing because, as you said when I first asked you, it's it's a such a broad topic. Uh, today, I I really just wanted our 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 family, our bedroom super producer family, to to understand how big of an, an endeavor it is to build a brand. Um, but other than that, um, what 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 would you say is music that sells? How how do you put together music that sells? You have to be a little bit aware of the trends. 
to understand what type of music, let's say we're talking about stock music, um, you have to be able to understand like what um, what's being used uh, in the industry, be it, uh, like I always say, try to visualize your song in a particular commercial or at the beginning of a podcast or at the end of a podcast or um, for a little a little small segment uh, at the beginning of a, some some YouTube uh, intro for a specific show and that's what's kind of that's what's going to guide you um, to what type of music also you can make so also go on all those those sites the audio jungles the pond 5 the premium beats uh, whatever uh, music vine audio blocks all those 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 libraries and and check out their top tens and say what's what's the best sellers, and you could use that as the kind of a, like a metric to understand what in what type of genres or what type of music perhaps uh, you could sell. Um, on my side, if I could give maybe a pointer to some to some people out there, usually the top tens or the top twenties or whatever, it, that's all great, but what I would do is. Check the categories of type of tracks in the like the genres or whatever or trap or whatever type of music you want to make. What what sells on those websites, and try to find maybe a category that's that you started to hear tracks in different commercials, but that there are not a lot of these tracks on the on those websites. Um, so. Perhaps, like you said earlier, we, we said that maybe it's a little bit saturated or whatever, and it's 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 a way maybe to get in the door of of these um, these sites if you provide them with music that they they know they need but they don't have enough of. Because sometimes, if let's say you're gonna make trap music on a certain website, and if there's 200 tracks already selling better than what you're gonna be putting on, or you're gonna be at the bottom of the pile, right? So. I think that could be a little bit of a trick um, to get get your foot in the door. Maybe try to find something that's not quite as popular that maybe you think is going to become popular, and perhaps um, to to fill the library and stuff that they don't have. I don't know if, what you think about that. Yeah, I think that's a great uh, piece of advice. Obviously, you you want to play to your strengths uh, and and. Say, for example, that, um, you know, corporate pop rock music is the thing on a certain site and uh, you can't play the guitar like uh, The Edge from U2. Uh, maybe that's not the style you want to go for, you know. If you play the keys really well, well, you, you need to, to understand which genres of music sell a lot that are keyboard based. Um, so that's one thing. And then... I mean, if you, on the on the stock music market, it's it's always like you said about finding a niche for yourself, finding this little sweet spot where there's not too much music, and you kind of are more proficient than av the average there, uh, and that that'll give you a, a big advantage over the competition. And if we're talking about producers doing the the whole um, YouTube and Instagram thing trying to cater to artists well i think it to me the more i look at that game the more i feel like it's more of a branding situation it's not so much what the beats sound like as it is what your persona online feels like and uh so you you have to be willing to put yourself forward kind of be kind of become the star of your own show and obviously the music needs to be catchy and good and rather well mixed and mastered and all of that good stuff. But it's really more about um, what else comes around your music. What does it feel like when we're in the studio with you? Uh, like what makes you a special musician? You know what I mean? Mm. Oh, and you're that's you're absolutely right. And that's more complicated to me because most of us, Maybe I'll, I'll generalize here, but most of us are nerds who like to be in the shadows, just work in our little home studio and not be bothered by anything else. So it, it, it can become very difficult to 
A, be genuine, and B, be spectacular in front of a camera. You know what I mean? So that part uh, you have to reflect upon a whole lot more, and you'll probably have to make a lot of mistakes with your video content creation because you're not going to find your voice in those first few videos that you're going to post online. Um, so you, you have to do tens and, and even hundreds of these little videos before finding your voice and then hopefully becoming somewhat of a, of a viral success. The other, um, the other thing is, again, if I look at the most successful Instagram producers out there, you know, people like, uh, is it Nick Myra? Uh, and then Cash Money AP and these guys. There, there must be new kids on the block, but these were the ones that I studied lately and that what they do is basically post a one beat a day, you know? It's it's all about consistency and volume. So, so in, in their case, they might just post or have people take pictures of them in front of their gear and then on YouTube, that's for Instagram, and then on YouTube, they'll probably, you know, like I said, post one beat a day or maybe three to five a week, something like that. But it's really all about consistency and volume. So it's going back to what we discussed at the very beginning of the episode. It's, it's, you have to understand who you are and what you want, you're trying to achieve because stock music versus artists is two completely different games. I would try to focus on one of those at a time, not try to sell the artists and have music on libraries such as Pond5 and, and Audio Jungle, uh, because you're you're just gonna dilute your talent if you're trying to, to master both games at the same time. Like we were talking at the beginning, at first focus more on like really, really getting better at your craft and the musical knowledge and like before the whole I wanna make a business out of it and just the fact that you're going to have a solid foundation like that with your music skills, you're going to be able to, to react more dynamically if you need to switch things up, if you need to, to, to make a different type of song with like a trend that's going, or if uh, you want to, you want to do more ukulele stuff or like, I think really having that good, solid musical technical and musical knowledge is really essential to be able to um, afterwards being able to dial in those those the the right tracks uh, that you're going to be able to to put on the right the right website to to be able to sell your product yeah that's uh, pretty much uh, what i think too uh, and it goes uh, well with that uh, lord of the rings meme like one does not just start selling beats overnight, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, I, I think that you you talked about the, those ten thousand hours, and, and that's accurate. I think, especially nowadays, you know, in our days, you didn't need, need to have beats perfectly mixed and mastered to sell to artists, but nowadays you do. So that's another ten thousand hours right there. You know, learning learn at least learning to mix and put a limiter. <laughs> so that the beat sounds clean, has great bass, and is lo as loud as your competition. Um, we, we didn't really talk about the, the whole technical aspect of polishing your beats. And you, you talked about having the right sounds and, and kind of writing the right music in a specific genre. That's also important. Um, we'll probably have to, 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 to create another episode, maybe just on the songwriting aspect of selling music. Yeah. That could be in a, the future. A good idea. Uh, but um, to close this discussion, um, let's uh, let's try to uh, give our audience our top, let's say, top top three tips each. What would be your top three tips on how to get started selling beats online? I think I already give a, a lot of. A lot of tips, but I could give I could give some more. I think one of them, like you said, um, if you could get as close as you can to professionally produced quality songs, I think that's like that would be one of the strong points. Yep. Also, number two, if you're in the stock game, I think one of my tips would be 
when you start composing, think about shorter versions. If you think about shorter version, I think you're able, you're going to be able to have things that develop much uh, at a, a much better pace. Um, having that hook come at the right time, having that that catchy instrument come at the right time. If you think about short, like 15 seconds version, I think it gives you like it puts your head in a space for composing that. Um, I think your songs become better at translating what like a lot of producers like look for when they're they're making like the commercials or the car commercial or whatever or that hamburger commercial. Um, that would be for stock music. And third, keep things moving. Um, usually, like we've done this like uh, for a long time, and we still get sometimes stuck. You stay stuck in like a, like a feedback loop of like you don't want you don't know if you should take out the song or not or just like print the effect keep going um you know just keep moving along until you're finished because it's it's too easy as a as an artist as a musician to just stay stuck on that snare sound that you're trying to find that special special sound and then you lose the whole the big picture you lose it just because you're trying to find that perfect snare sound like I always try to keep the like the the big picture um and also the last thing i think for me the like ultimate 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 tip have different templates for different styles of music that you're creating you're gonna be way way faster in making those tracks hmm. that's so much great stuff right there i think the uh especially being we didn't talk about that a whole lot today but being prepared and being organized and having systems to uh, work faster really helps with the inspiration and the creativity uh, if i were to add on top of what you just said i would say as we've hinted a whole lot along the way today uh, that you need to know thyself you need to know what you're good at what you like to do And all of that to, to make this process enjoyable, because I know one thing for sure is that when I started to, to do this thing professionally, I got lost many different times where I wasn't so sure I liked making music every day like I used to when I was a teenager. And sometimes you have to go back to your roots um, of what makes those hours disappear when you make music. What kind of setting, what kind of mood is it uh, for you in and around the studio uh, so that you enjoy it? Because you're never going to be a millionaire selling beats online if you hate it <laughs> most of the times, you know? Yeah, true. You have, to, you have to love doing it and not just when you get that great idea. It's those, those eight hours of trying things out just to get that... That 12 seconds that you're like, all right, I can do something with that, right? And uh, what else? I think you said that, but I'll, I'll reiterate. Uh, you have to be prepared for a marathon here. Um, just getting in your 10,000 hours of beat making, then your 10,000 hours of mixing and mastering. You have to be prepared that in the first five to 10 years, you're not going to see a whole lot of uh, financial success with this music business of yours but that doesn't mean that someday you won't be able to to reap the benefits and, and the rewards of such a gratifying and fun career and um, you have to be prepared to to still be around when your competition loses interest and motivation because that's one of the big things that i uh realized like 15 years in is that When I started to, to really make uh, a living making beats is when my competition, most of my competition had to get a, a, like a, a regular full-time job because they didn't make enough money making just the music. And basically they quit when I really got started. So that's a testament to just how long and, and difficult this path is. But then again, just how much... Um, rewarding it's going to be so you, you need to keep that in mind and and make a 10-year plan for yourself 10 to 15 years if you if you will and and that way it won't seem so far 
away from you. you. You'll just know just how much work you need to put in. And bit by bit, you build those walls and you build that mansion for yourself. Uh, and that's the way to approach this game, I think. Yeah, not enough uh, people uh, are honest about that type of timeline. Usually it's people think that it's uh, you can do it in uh, six months to a year and bang, boom, you, you hear these stories of people making tracks in their basement for three weeks and then uh, uh, they were on a, a major album or something. And usually that's really the exception to the rule. It's not, uh, it's not reality. And uh, if you compare it to something more real out there, I've, I've never heard of a doctor who only studied six months. Well, to me, the, the doctors that study the less are the ones that get out of med school after 10 to 11 years. Exactly. So, so, yeah. so, so if you want to be a, like a, a specialist, like a surgeon or something, it's 15 minimum. Exactly. 15 <laughs> And then to you 20. have to go to conferences every year, read a whole lot of things every year. So, so that's, that's the real world. Yeah. Thank you for reminding us, BK. Yeah, that, uh, music, you have it, uh, an ongoing process. Yep. All right, so a uh, great episode, BK. I think that uh, there's there's a lot of food for thought right here in these uh, minutes. Hopefully, people, if you listen to the podcast, let's say you're on YouTube, drop comments. Keep the discussion going with us. If you're on Spotify, well, uh, pay us a visit at delicatebees.com because we have a whole lot more of uh, where this came from. In terms of blog posts, our book, our masterclass, our libraries, if you're more in uh, the process of improving your sound, finding new uh, sources of inspiration. And uh, I'll let you uh, take it away, BK. Well, yeah, I hope we could. Uh, I hope we uh, inspired people. I hope we didn't discourage people with uh, our, our timelines, our 10, 10 year to 15 year timelines. Uh, but. At the end of the day, we're just trying to be real here. We're not just trying to sell you flowers or tell you that everything's going to be all right in six months. The reality is it's not it's not that easy. But to answer your question from the beginning, yes, you can make a living selling music. And on that note, we're going to wish you a great week. Keep working on your craft and uh, keep working on your, your 10,000 hours. And we're going to see you on the next episode. Peace out. Peace. Thanks for listening to the podcast, guys. Remember to subscribe if you like what you hear. We're on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube. Also, if you want to support us, head on to delicatebeast.com. You can find our serum packs, our contact instruments, and also plenty of freebies if you subscribe to the newsletter. Don't forget to follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and once again, keep making that awesome music.